Well, 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 what have I got for you today? Energon armor, Iaconus. Action attack is ultimate class. Ultimate badass. He's a war titan. I suppose this is a ship or a city mode, maybe? I think it's very cool to have a new titan thrown into the mix. Uh, yeah. Iaconus. We're doing a titan, titan, Iaconus. That's what's up. That's what we're gonna do. out of the packet looking all big and green and imposing he was very far away he is large i mean he's obviously not you know like mainline war for cybertron generation z what have you chug large titan class but pretty cool to have another titan yeah yeah can i just say he is giving off mad super sentai vibes he just looks so go go robo -rific. Come on, tell me you don't see it, right? Especially with a couple of more modern Sentai robots. I like war. Wind blades inside me. Even when I was looking online, trying to find out a little bit more about him, and I don't want to give away, you know, too many spoilers if you haven't seen him, but if you're watching this, you know he exists, so it can't be too big a thing. Anyway, I watched him fighting another one of the, what I believe to be new Titans. And like the, the scale of the fight, like stomping on buildings, even the music they used was very reminiscent of some like Saban Power ranger -y goodness. The green of his plastic does have a slight like metallic fleckle through it, which is nice given it is the solid color. It does just bring out a little twinkle. I'm also loving like in his shoulder pauldrons, what looks like, yeah, that could be infrastructure where people live. You get the same vibe down on his shins. So, yep, this is giving me a good sense of his Titan scaling. This is where other robots could live. They could live in those shins, Mighty Max style. Now, obviously being a Cyberverse figure and at this price point and this scaling, he is packed to the Robo Rafters with action features. Uh, one of the fun accidental ones, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, is a punching action. He can punch if you'd like him to. That's just sort of by way of transformation more than anything else, but huh, you got punched. He did also come with some Titan worthy accessories. We have his shield, which for this mode you have this open. I don't really know why. I guess to show accuracy, I suppose. To put it onto his arm, you have to have it flecked out so you can get access to that port. <laughs> Manta! And then he's got this awesome sparkle sword that looks eerily familiar to me. I can't quite put my finger on it. Someone let me know in the comments, but does this, like, other than kind of looking like the Prime Star Saber, is it, like, actually someone else's sword just redone for this? Or is it just an awesome stylistic nod? You be the judge. Sparkle, sparkle. Mmm. My punch is now a chop. It's just undeniably cool looking. I've not had a great run with Cyberverse figures. Even Nor Who I Love is problematic. But um, I'm vibing on this. And you know, not to mention the fact that it being essentially a five millimeter pegged weapon, it can pretty well be an awesome new sword for whomever has the power to wield it. Sword of Iaconus. Grant me sight beyond sight. I have the power! Ham man. The other accessory that he came with is this pack here, which folds up like this for, um, for his robot mode. Without it, you kind of had some spring-loaded articulation. Now that this is on, I don't think it's coming off again, right? Like, that's how those clips work, isn't it? Isn't that not the whole point? Maybe I'll try. I'll try now. All right, well, that was scary, but I did get it off. It came off. Be mindful when you put it in that it doesn't seem like it really wants to come out, but uh, it does make for a cleaner robot. So yeah, if you don't have that on, you can get a sense of the ooh, stomp action I was talking about from Transformation. Run, run for your life. Keep running. Being Cyberverse, with the gimmicks, which are fun, 
It does also limit a lot of your articulation and playability and posability and stuff. Or who knows, from a different perspective, perhaps it enhances the playability. Anyway, you got them sweet elbows and a bicep swivel, which is noise. Waist articulation that is spring-loaded, so he is gonna snap back at you with his kung fu grip. His arms do move, right? But this one, ow! When you move his right arm, at least, you know, initially, oh, that is some ka-chunky motion. It activates his spark armor, which does make him look a lot more like he did from the clips I saw. It is kind of a shame that the show accuracy is speckly see-through blue blue, seeing as I think we all know with time that'll crack and be scattered like dust to the wind. But for now, it's just really cool. So to reload it, open his backpack, flickety flick, put that up. This opens the panel, I think, but like, doesn't really do much else. And if you don't move the arm, the armor won't come out. So, you know, there's that. It's time for war. Yeah. It is a little bit of a tough gimmick to pull off at times, just because of the other automated features mean his chest comes away really easily. So that pressure isn't kind of matched to his shoulders. So, you know, it's not a big deal, you hold it. So you have to hang on to it a little bit. It's worth it to be able to do this. Yeah, That's a pretty solid action. Now I'm punching again. Say what you will, if nothing else, that was a slick action. All right, so the whole sort of gimmicky thing, I guess, at this scale with this line is that a lot of it's kind of automated, which simplifies things, I suppose, and in another sense makes them that much more difficult. But you wanna go ahead, get rid of the sword and the shield, save them for Pokemon. And then there's a couple of versions. There's a version where you kind of unfold his arms and bring out thrusters. So he's sort of more like, I guess a ship when he's in his eventual um, alt mode. But that doesn't work if you want to do the whole full automorphy thing. So we'll leave them out for now and then I'll show you that mode once we're in that mode, Chuffield. Go ahead and get those arms out. Get them around in like a ground pound. Now for the for the whole vehicle mode to work, you need this piece in play. So we'll go ahead and fold these down, plug them back in at the base. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Automorphy. So then you basically, you want to spin him around and he's spring loaded. So you want to hang on to the sucker and then action him all down with the chest out. See, there's that notch with that hook. So you got to make sure you get that down. That'll support that. And then make sure these arms are out straight. Ah. This is something that happens a bit. You gotta make sure that when you connect it down that you're getting that to click in. Cause it will click in at a point, but not at like a, a good point really. Uh, that doesn't make much sense. You grab your shield, pincer those pincers back together. Ow. And that plugs in on the back. See, in that bit there, plug that in. There you have it. This is his alt mode, I guess, his sort of city mode. So the, uh, the sword, right, they say it stores there, and it does, I suppose. But that sword in there is also how you'll be able to activate that switch there and unfold him all. But while we've got him like this, I thought I may as well show you the other configuration where you have to transform him that bit more. So I guess if you were gonna have him displayed in alt mode over um, robot mode, I suppose you would do this. Right, so this is the other way that you can have him. It really doesn't change much. 
it makes it a little less clear about which direction is forward. It's a little bit of a cat dog situation. But anyway, that's that. The other thing I found with this mode is it's much harder to put him down. Yeah, I just managed to set him down Indiana Jones style. But with the arms like this, the chances of accidentally activating that auto morphing, watch me transform feature, it just gets activated. And that's, that's not what you want in alt mode. You want alt mode, eh? Hmm, think about it. With this more fun action feature focused version of the transformation, the arms are down. It doesn't make a huge difference to me. I'm not super invested in the character yet. Maybe when I get up to those episodes in the show, I'll be like, all, oh man, why couldn't he have dog cones for hands like I wanted him to? But I guess then there is still that, that potential. So the sword in a very grayscale King Arthian kind of um, Omega lock sort of way. It has that sheath there, and if you push it in. Man. I'm gonna do it again. It is so hard not to like that. Right, how could you not get behind that? Then you just kinda gotta fold his arms down. Yeah. Chuck that shield back on however you want. I think he can use it as a blaster. Maybe that's why it. Maybe that's why it pinches open, because then it's like a blaster mode if he spins it around. I don't know, time will tell. You know, that works too, all big and cool behind him. And then with this sort of base plate, helping it work gimmick, just kind of hold that up. Eh, wiggle the sword out. They'll fold up behind his legs to make that less obvious. And sword in hand. And just for fun, here he is with Deluxe Class RC, for a little in-universe comparison. And you know, just for a slightly more humbling comparison, here he is next to Commander Class Jetfire. If you are already a fan of the Cyberverse line and you've been watching the show, digging the toys, then I would say that this is an absolute must because this is, of the Cyberverse figures I've played with, this is probably my favorite so far, to be honest. And he'll just fill out the shelf so nicely. Even if you're not a Cyberverse collector, like I wouldn't say that I am, it's another Titan and that's just cool. He'll look good on the shelf, it's a fun gimmick. And you know, just to sort of finish things off, cause it's awesome. Hiya! Sometimes a cool robot is just a cool robot. <laughs>